We're ready to start our webinar. Um, hello and welcome everyone. I hope you're all excited to be here as we are excited to walk you through this process of getting your app development effort off the ground in this webinar. At any time, if you have any uh, trouble hearing me, please let me know or Slack in the channel um, and then we'll kind of resolve that. So today I will be your host. My name is Ariel Gonzalez. I am the content marketing manager here at Thunkable. With my previous marketing experience, I amplify our brand story across several channels and help bring impactful and relevant content to our Thunkable creators, such as this webinar. I'm super excited to introduce our speaker for today, which is Quentin Karen. He is a professional product designer on the team and has a thorough background in architectural design, photography, as well as digital illustration. His expertise in UI and web design makes him a great asset to the Thunkable community, as well as clients seeking to optimize their mobile app design. And he also works to bring you the best user experience in the Thunkable platform. So before moving on, we're just gonna go over what our agenda is today. So before uh, moving in, we are gonna be talking about generating the app idea. So that way you have a very firm foundation to be moving forward. Uh, you, we will be going into all the core features that you will be needing to know, as well as the user journey and getting into the nitty gritty of the visual design. So why you're here, you have, you're either starting this for the first time, you're starting your first app, need a little bit of guidance or either hit a roadblock or just need a little bit more help kind of getting through uh, that final hurdle. So what you will be leaving with today is you'll be able to craft your journey flow from basic to more complex. Um, you'll get insights on design and typology, whether you have a certain brand guideline currently or need help designing it so that you can get all the visuals onto your app. Um, we will also be going over import, being able to import everything you need on your Thunkable app. So before diving in, um, we do wanna share a little statistic with you. So only 55% of product launches across all companies, regardless of size, launch on time and with the features expected. So why is it that people aren't, or companies aren't launching on time with the features that they need? Well, this is due to the lack of either scope creep, there wasn't um, a full planning of all the requirements that are needed. So what does this mean for you? Well, the most important part of the entire development process is the preparation process, which is what Quentin will be walking you through today so you can be set up for success. All right, thanks, Ariel. Um, so we're gonna start with the research and uh, ideation phase. Uh, you may already have a, a, a business idea um, and an app a, a idea um, for your business. Um, there's more than 4 million apps on the Google Play and App Store combined. Um, so that for you is great because you can find a lot of inspirations of successful apps and other not so successful apps and analyze them and, and, and how they're built uh, and see if you can pull ideas from that. Uh, the design process of your app can totally be a remix of something that is existing uh, because out there, there's a lot of creative apps uh, that are already being created. Uh, so if you rely on those principles and, and use the designs that are already existing, you can find um, ways to solve a problem creatively uh, and that tailor to your niche clients uh, or the target that you want to have. Um, so part of the research phase, the biggest one is to understand the market. You might have done that uh, with your business. Uh, but the design is also important uh, and what's going around in your industry. Let's say you're a financial company and you want to be a, a dashboard app. Uh, you will need to understand what in terms of design does that mean uh, for your market. Um, again, check the existing solutions. Uh, and when you have your idea for your app, you need to simplify it as much as you can. And that is really important because uh, everything that you build from that on the design part, design can be very complex. It doesn't have to be. But if you have a simple idea, I'll start with that. Uh, it'll, it'll definitely help you down the road. Uh, and the last part is the feature research. Uh, and that comes uh, again with the market and research. So now you're in the sort of the planning phase. Um, if you're a business, you have a timeline, you have resources. Uh, we know that very well at Thunkable. And that drives some of the decisions that we make with the engineering and product uh, development. Um, so that is always sort of the most important essential uh, thing to remember uh, and that will lead to your feature prioritization so when you have that app idea and you have an idea of the features that you want to include uh, now you're going to need to prioritize that uh, it most likely will be a must have versus would be nice to have um, and you should be focusing on the most impactful areas what really adds value for the users and what is essential for them to complete the actions um, that they need to do so 
uh, not long ago, we built a webinar and we presented the job board app, uh, job board apps, plenty on the market, Indeed, um, LinkedIn, um, pl plenty available that we could pull in, uh, inspiration from. Uh, but we, we did it something for an hour webinar. We didn't have resources, we didn't have time. Uh, so we had to simplify it. So what we do, we divide it by users, always start with the users. Um, one company is trying to hire people. So Greg, office coordinator at Delor, just wants to hire a new account for the company. Very simple idea. The second user, job seeker. Adriana is looking for a job as an accountant. Yeah, how fitting. Um, so once we have that, what does it translate into features? Well, probably Greg wants to be able to create a posting, edit, manage from the database or the app. The second user, they have to, they can view a list of jobs and most likely apply to it. So that is the core uh, essential things that the app must have. Um, do we have time for more? Well, unfortunately we did not have time for more during that webinar, but something that would be nice, uh, users can create a profile and have information automatically saved. In the business, in, in a business case, that would be part of our MVP because automatically field profiles and things like that uh, really help the uh, user experience on their apps. And the second one was the Evans board that uh, connect to local businesses with local residents. So there's a little bit more on the community side part of the app um, and that would be later a plan for the future. So again, core requirements. This is your time to document absolutely everything so you have a solid plan for what comes next. You're not worrying about styling, you're not worrying about buttons, you're not worrying about colors yet. Uh, it's the step that is really your foundation document, your live document uh, that you can refer to later on and that will really simplify some of the choices that you will have to do. Uh, once you have your core requirements, what do you do with those? You go back to your features and now understanding of how your features or how your users interact with your features. Um, that can be done with a UI flows method that I'm just going to show you, uh, the flow charts, user flows, everything flows. Uh, in user experience design, we love to have little diagrams and charts that show connections between things um, because that will be essential for an intuitive app. And the, my favorite method, um, because it's so simple, you spend in paper, very efficient. Um, you have a, 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 um, a diagram that shows what the users see and then under what they yeah. do what are the choices that they have um, and then they can pick from. Then what happens when they click on those choices and when they select those choices, what do they see next and what happens next? Um, that is the example of the job app and that was leading to the flows and more complex screens later on. So again, this is very simple, it's text-based and it's designed for the garbage. It's, it's, not, it's not for you to get stuck on, it's really to push the design process forward and to get fast at making decisions. Um, a more complex way of showing that and showing the decisions that the users have to make on your app as a flow chart. The flow chart will really define the existing or identify, help you identify the roadblocks that you might meet during the app um, on your features. So if you have a feature that needs a choice of no or yes, uh, that will lead the user to another place. What happens on that other spot? Will it go back? Will it go forward? Um, so those are all the choices that are defined uh, by the users. Um, that is the example of the job app. Uh, so that's sort of like the final, what you see between the mix of uh, the decisions that we made and the wire flow. So this is a high fidelity with colors and things like that, uh, but it really helps you see the decisions that user make. And without using the simplified method, this would have been a very complex process to get to. Uh, so now it's time for you to drop some mockups. Uh, mockups, again, we're in the simple phase, ugly colors, simple screens, you're worrying about layout, you're worrying about how things work together, and you're not worrying about the final product yet. Uh, on this page, you can see sort of the evolution that usually uh, the design process go through on very simple up to middle fidelity wireframe and more final solutions with colors. Um, but at this stage, again, keep it very simple. And the final is the user flow. So you use a flow, you have an understanding of what all the features are and you're connecting all the screens. So you're basically putting it in context 
And that is very helpful for the final decisions that you have to make and for adjustments. So just jumping in here so that Quentin can get um, a little break for water. Um, so what is the things that we have reviewed? So you wanna make sure that you're able to firmly answer what is this app solving for? You also wanna ensure that you're conducting research on your market and features you wanna implement so that you can set yourself up for success. You wanna focus on your core requirements versus um, the things that you absolutely need versus the things that you would like to have. You wanna ensure that you're laying out your user flow to help create an intuitive and easy to navigate app so your users have an easy time navigating through your app. And you wanna ensure that you have fully mocked up and um, prototype examples. And moving on to the design phase. So you probably would be asking, haven't we been designing this whole time? Well, actually, no, this is all part of the ideation phase. Um, and everything we reviewed from core features to mapping up your user flow will all help you set that process up and that very solid foundation. So as far as getting into the details of selecting colors, typography, and more, it's something that Quentin will be diving into next in the design portion. All right, thanks, Ariel. Um, so user experience before user interface. Uh, that is essential to worry about the hierarchy and navigation and the essential uh, UX decisions that you have. Uh, so now you have your app idea. Uh, what does it mean inside the app and how are you going to help your users navigate through the features that you have and how do you help them have a good experience? Um, so the first uh, principle that you should follow is always make it easy. Users don't have time. Uh, you could use a three to five click rules where every decision they make uh, is never more than three to five steps. Uh, that is that is a, a good principle to follow. Uh, the navigation should be pre predictable and easy to follow and give your users what they want right away. Um, the user's flow will really help with this and, and figuring out those, uh, those details. Uh, the second important step is to rely on common behaviors. So again, we're not reinventing the wheel here. If you have an app uh, that solves a certain problem, everything around it from navigation to how to close a screen, it, they already established patterns that people are used to and users have strong expectations on, on how the app works. So a quick, simple example would be how do you want to close a page in your app? The X is at the top right of the screen. It should not be at the bottom right. It should not be right in the middle. Uh, notifications and all the features are usually on the top right. So don't invert the patterns that are already working. Um, third concept is clear and strong designs. Don't make users think. Uh, and that's part of a book uh, that is really interesting. Uh, we'll probably have the link uh, later on. Uh, but you have to use direct and descriptive language. You have to be mindful of cognitive overload and break down the steps for uh, easy action. So um, your call to actions should help the users feel confident uh, of what will happen next. Uh, you should highlight the most important part of your screens and using design principles to do, uh, to do all of that. So now we're diving into more uh, the visual aspect. Um, all your brand identity, your colors, your design direction, typography goes in this section. So by now you have a pretty established plan. And if you are a business, you may already be familiar with those, um, the brand identity and the brand package. Uh, you have a mission, you have values, you have a personality that you want to communicate with your users and your clients. Uh, you have a unique positioning and you have a brand voice. So how, how do you pull that together uh, visually and what does it mean to put it together visually? Uh, well, let's use an example of MailChimp, which is a, a no-code tool that we are very familiar with. Uh, great branding, but what they do really well is that they're very um, targeted and they're very niche-oriented, and everything ties together really nicely. So you can see the yellow use is quite modern and energetic color, and that's exactly what they want to portray. But their brand voice is also very playful and very funny. Uh, they're very customer-oriented, and it shows because the website uh, is designed a certain way, the product is designed a certain way. So they use all those elements and the visual elements to support the message that they're trying to have. Um, so for you, how, what does it mean in your app? Well, you have big three area to focus on. You have typography, which is one of the most important one. You have the color and you have the design direction for your application, which is basically putting it together. Um, typography. The text is the most essential tool you have to communicate with your users. That's the thing that they read all the time. That's the messaging that supports uh, the idea that you have. And, and each type of typography 
has a different feeling and is perceived a different way. So that's very important when you have, a, for example, uh, uh, you're a lawyer and you try to build an app for uh, your services, your fonts should be oriented towards a little bit more modern and professional looking fonts. Helvetica would be a great choice for it, uh, but it, it, it feels and it's perceived a certain way versus a display or script font, something that is handwritten would probably not be a great solution for that. Um, for your app, what you can do uh, is focus on the typographic system and typographic scale. Those might sound complex right now, but if you look it up on online, you'll find very useful um, resources to actually build those. It's, it's fairly simple. It's just to build a hierarchy in your app to show the titles, subtitles, and body text. So the users can digest that information really quickly. That helps the readability of your app, that helps the user experience. It, it really makes your app uh, very solid when you have a typography um, foundation that is good. Uh, your goal, awesome readability. Don't exhaust your users. Again, they do not have time. Uh, how do we apply it to your app? Well, you create that hierarchy with all your text. Again, the title and everything system. Focus on good contrast and proportion. Certain colors will not go against each other. The size of the text is important and the space in between the text is important. Use online tools to help you get started. Again, plenty of resources online that you can find uh, for this um, typographic scales in the system. And that's an example of a great app that used different principles and good typography to communicate the message on top of colors that we'll see uh, about right now. Um, so use the colors to support your visual communication. Colors is probably the most visual thing that you can have in your app and it's right away uh, perceived a certain way. Um, so for example, warm colors. Generally speaking, reds, oranges, yellows, they communicate more energetic and modern designs. If you have a wellness app uh, or a yoga app, you might not want to have a bright red as your main color. You might want something a little bit softer and something that allows you to communicate something about wellness and relaxations and, and, and slower workout and things like that. Um, so generally those colors, um, again, cheerfulness, fun, accessibility, but it's also uh, used to uh, communicate affordability. Uh, so think about all the discounts banners that you see on the street or the signs Yellow is used and, uh, in a lot of those cases. Uh, so those are some of the examples, branding. Uh, you can see Walmart, you can see a hot dog uh, brand that I think is, is very fitting for it. Uh, and you can see that website page example with very warm colors. Uh, it's very inviting, it's very energetic. Uh, it feels really young. And you have Snapchat, which I think is uh, targeting more young population, more young people. Uh, and I think their color is, is, again, very bright, very energetic, so it, it fits very well. Um, like next, we have cool colors. Cool colors, green and blues, very versatile. Blue, culturally and historically speaking, is the most universally appealing color on the spectrum. Hence why a lot of companies are using blues for their branding, for their website, and for everything in between. Uh, it's a great choice when you want to appeal to a wide range of demographic and build trust. Uh, now green, it means natural or money. I know it's kind of contrasting concepts, but a lot of financial and a lot of healthcare brands often use it um, because it really portrays uh, that message. It really communicates that message well. Some of, those are some of the examples. Again, across the spectrum, there's tech companies, uh, beverage company, financial tool, but blue being the most popular and blue inviting to uh, being trustworthy, uh, that's why it's used by a lot of companies. Uh, next on the colors, we have the blacks. Blacks, sophisticated, modern, timeless. Think Apple's website, think luxury car brands, fashion brands. Um, if you wanna look modern, if you wanna look sophisticated and, and, and luxurious, uh, those are nice colors to, um, to have. Um, and those are some of the examples that you may find for branding and again, websites and whatnot. A last one, cliches. So right or wrong, pink is culturally associated with femininity. What does that mean for branding? Most beauty, wellness, soft, luxurious identity on the on, on internet, fashion, you'll find some variations of pinks. 
you know, they're soft, a little bit more modern with a little bit uh, saturated colors. Um, but it, it's very common to find these brandings with a lot of pinks in it. That being said, it's possible to break the cycle with careful considerations for the people's psychological biases towards colors. The users can accept new ideas when it's done well. And especially when it's part of your brand identity, let's say you're going against the establishment, you're uh, more like a rebel company, you might want to break this cycle and show some uh, different color and offer that to your users. Uh, so for example, that psychology uh, app and another example of a wellness app that have blue and yellow, not typically used for that purpose, but that gradient makes it very soft. And it, I think it communicates the message really well as well. Um, what does that mean for you and your app? Well, once you have picked, let's say three or four colors, now you need to think about how to use them on your elements. 60% of your app should be used with your primary color, 30% with your secondary color, and 10% for your accent color. It's a very simple rule to follow, and it's very efficient when you want to have a good ratio uh, for the color of your app. You can tie it together by using a few neutrals, but what I would really recommend is to keep it simple. Uh, and here you can see the effect of typography and the color. So let's say my 60% is the black color, my title and like seeing the other colors that I've picked against that uh, will help me make decisions. Um, if you see the bottom uh, right corner with the green screen, I think my white text on green screen it actually doesn't look very good. There's not enough contrast, which will be a problem for readability later on. So you might want to avoid um, those type of decisions, but to make it, to lay it out like that, it is really helpful for you to make uh, good decisions. So what do we have, um, like what do we need to worry about with colors? Keep it simple. You don't need 40 colors. I know that at Thunkable, we have a, a rich design system. We have a lot of colors for different elements, but when you're building an app, it's a lot easier to keep it simple and to start with a few colors that will really drive your message uh, instead of worrying about having so many variations of the same green or having so many variations of, a, of another color. Um, again, so many resources online. There's colors that zero, one of my favorite one, Adobe color, uh, Dribble has a lot of inspiration as well. Um, I think color right now, it's very prominent in design because people realize how important it is. Um, and people understand that color psychology is, is, is really essential um, to communicate your message. So how do we pull it all together? Well, we need some sort of design direction, otherwise called art direction. Um, and that is all the principles, the rules, the things that you can uh, use and rely on to bring your typography, your color, and all the decisions that you've made before together. Uh, the design principles, they can be a hierarchy, balance, proportions, contrast, uh, your visual elements. So are they round shaped? Are they square shaped? What does that mean to have uh, more like rounded edges elements? Does that communicate something different than having square shape elements? All these considerations that you can have, it will really bring every element together. Uh, so let's say you picked a, a, a very black modern uh, style for your app because that's what you want to communicate. Uh, maybe a lot of rounded elements might not communicate that, that luxurious feel, that luxurious brand. Maybe you want something a little bit more classic, so you might have just a lot more squares and a lot more elements that are like that. Um, all your visual elements, they should always focus, they should always be supporting your message. And again, it's full circle, you can go back to study successful apps. How professional uh, app maker have designed their apps to communicate those messages? Do you like how they do it? Do you enjoy the type of colors that they picked? Uh, that can be a great source of inspiration. Um, I think it's good to look at an example. Again, that's found on Dribble. Um, so for you, for the people who are not familiar with this website, uh, that's where a lot of designers post uh, what they've been working on. And it's, it's really good for color. It's really good for inspiration for design. Uh, and I found this one, which is a, a food menu or some sort of like ordering app. Uh, and you can clearly see 
the use of colors, the use of the elements, the illustrations, the roundness of the buttons, the menu at the bottom, everything feels coherent together uh, because they want to communicate something very specific. They want to be modern, energetic. It probably is a younger demographic that they're trying to target. So everything from the colors to the shape to the typography supports that message. And the visuals, I think on this app actually adds value. So beef burger, if you want to order that, you have visual that complements it. Maybe it's photo, maybe it's illustration, but all of that helps you make those decisions quicker. And not only is visually appealing, but it, it helps you navigate through your app. Um, so always seek to add value. Your visual identity should always support your message and offer a pleasant experience for your users. And I think now it's Ariel for the final check-in. Yes, thank you so much, Quentin. So just to review all the great things that Quentin reviewed as far as the process, you just wanna ensure that you understand what all your app requirements are before starting. You wanna ensure and know how your users will be interacting with your app. You need to ensure that you're fully full prototyping your app as well and build out the fundamentals of your design system or brand identity, similar to what Quentin was going through before, You know, knowing what colors are gonna work and what you want your visual palette to look like on your app. So that's our final check-in and moving on. Uh, before concluding, I just wanted to give a little feedback or um, summary on who Thunkable is, if you do not know. Thunkable is the most powerful and robust no-code development platform that lets anyone design, develop, and deploy native mobile applications without having to ever write code. So you don't need a coding background for this. Um, it gives you the ability to tap into native Android, iOS, mobile web apps with all native capabilities. And then um, as far as the five core things about us, to really you know, leave you with this, we are completely no code. Being no code, we allow you to drag and drop blocks uh, to build your app and we allow for complete customization. So we don't limit you to just templates. You have great ideas and you wanna fully build it out how you see fit. We have an extensive integration capabilities. And lastly, we provide you with all hands-on support that you need for developing your app or your business. And then um, just some takeaways of the benefits of building with Thunkable. You want to unleash your innovation. We are here to help that with that. Um, you get to iterate quickly, you test and deploy. Uh, the time to market is weeks, not months, unlike when you would have with having to work with other teams. Um, this is all about speed. And we give you a lot of hands-on help from our CS team. And we are extensible and able to engage. So we have open APIs for integrations, such as importing designs for Figma, uh, deploy directly to Android, iOS, and web. And for those of you that do know, you know, this can also be a headache. So we know the pain and we are here to help you every step of the way. Um, and so that concludes our webinar. Um, so I will open up the floor to some questions. Let me sort through some private messages that I got. Um, so one of the questions, Quentin, um, there was a lot of focus on user flows and design prior to the MVP stage. Why do you recommend doing that instead of hopping directly into development? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, let me go back to that uh, UI method. There we go. So why do we focus on that before building anything? Uh, it's because this is a very simple process and it's, it's very fast. Um, when you design anything, and let's say you're, you're redoing your, your apartment, your house or your kitchen or, or, or whatnot, you're not focusing on the plate that you're gonna put on your counter. You're actually gonna focus on the space in general, then you're gonna dive into more granular details that will fit in your kitchen. This is the same process. If you start with the details, you're gonna get lost very quickly while you not, have not figured out the bigger decisions that you need to make for your app. So always start from the top idea, big ideas, how do ideas work together? And then with the users, how do the feature work together? And then we're worrying about the styling and then the realization of that. That's fantastic. Thank you, Quentin. And uh, one more question. So how much time should I dedicate to this process even if my app is small or they're just in the beginning phase of their app? Um, well, that, that's entirely up to you, but I would, I would really, um, I would really focus a lot of energy on solving the problems and really nailing down that, that requirements and that documentation of your process and figuring out the flows uh, because it'll facilitate some of the decisions that you'll have to take later. 
So basically, the more time you spend on that, and the faster it will be to your app development. Um, if you have your all your flows uh, nailed down, you'll see all the mistakes that potentially can happen and all the problems that you will encounter later. So let's say you find a mistake at that stage. It's very easy to you know scratch the paper, redo the flow, write it down, and then again continue iterating on that on those ideas. Um, so personally, I, I, I do love to spend a lot of time on that because it really helps me uh, later on. Uh, so that, that's what I would recommend. Great, great, that's great. And um, just to expand on a question that was in the chat. So um, someone that isn't a designer uh, or doesn't have any design experience, do you have any recommendations for good places to generate color palettes or uh, some tools that you use? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Let me go back to that uh, color palette. I think it is maybe the next one. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, I think Dribble is a great place to start. Um, Colors.co is a great place to start as well. I, I would generally just look Colors Palette online. There's so many resources now uh, that really helps you. Already pre-made ones. Um, sometimes you just have to type the main color. So let's let's say you have some sort of branding. Um, you're modern. You want to use energetic colors such as yellow. Um, you can go online, find that yellow color, and then create a palette that, or have a palette automatically created for you. Um, so I, I know colors can be a bit complex. It can be a never-ending search for the perfect color, um, and and it might be scary if you're not if you do not have a design background, uh, but with all the resources that you have online now, um, I, I think it's quite, it, it, it's, quite um, it's quite okay for you to explore that world and, and, and find the right colors for your, for your application, your project. Yeah, definitely for myself, it could get intimidating, but um, this has been really helpful. So thank you so much. And then as the final question, um, I know someone asked, will this recording be available to all those indies? Yes. Um, so keep a lookout for your email. We will be um, sending this recording over. Um, if you have any questions, this follow up, please don't hesitate to contact us and reach out. Um, but yes, this will be made available. So I think that about wraps it up. So thank you everybody for joining. Thank you, Quentin, for going in and uh, really laying out this process in a very clean and neat way. Um, and so we hope this has been very helpful for everybody. This will be documented and uh, keep a lookout for the the release and the recording coming out soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks everybody for coming.